When I was in uh, junior high, I had a really great science teacher. His name was Mr. Varial, and Mr. Varial was always uh, fond of saying that you and I live on an island. Now, to an 11, 12, 13 year old sitting in central Oregon, saying that I lived on an island didn't quite make sense to me. I lived nowhere near the ocean, and I lived in the middle of Oregon, which was part of a huge continent. How did I live on an island? But you know, Mr. Varial was right. The further along I got, I've been able to look back, and he's right. We do live on an island. The Earth is an island. You see, nothing really new comes to our planet. Yeah, sometimes an asteroid might fall, or dust falls from space, or a comet, but that really is rare, and not a lot of energy or new material comes to our planet. Not enough to even measure, really. Nothing new comes to our planet. Everything we have is right here on the Earth. We're an island really nothing outside of us that we can go to. We don't get to go to the moon for new food, or we don't get new rocks, really, from Mars or Jupiter. No, there's no rocks on Jupiter. Everything we have is here. We live on an island. The Earth is our island. And because we live on an island, we have all these things that we recycle and reuse things. We recycle materials. We recycle maybe um, glasses and things that we have that recycle. But our planet also recycles. It has a various number of cycles that reuse material. And in this video, we're going to look at one very specific one. We're going to look at the rock cycle. You know, in this video, we're going to do two different things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually build a working definition of what is the rock cycle. We're going to define rock cycle. Then we're going to identify the major parts of it to see in overall what happens to the rock cycle. In other videos, you can go back and look at the individual types of rock. Man, there's three just types that we kind of have to understand. And again, go to the other videos. You can learn a lot about the different ones and get really in the details of what it means. So there's igneous rocks, which are part of magma. It's cooling magma, so have something to do with volcanoes. We can think of it that way. Sedimentary rocks, which were really rocks built of little bits of other rocks. And metamorphic rocks, which are rocks that have been changed. Um, from other different types, from either igneous or sedimentary. And I encourage you to go to the other videos and make sure you understand what an igneous rock is, sedimentary rock, and a metamorphic rock is. But remember, there's no new types of rock. Rock is just being moved from igneous, sedimentary, to metamorphic and back around and around. Rocks are being constantly recycled by our planet. And that recycling is what we call the rock cycle. And our definition is going to be the process by which one rock is type is changed into another. The process by which one rock type is changed into another. That recycling, going back around and around. You can think of all the other cycles that we've talked about in my class, from the carbon cycle to convection to... Think of all the ones. There's food cycles and food webs and the cycle of life. And there's all these cycles that are happening. And the rock cycle is just one of them. So let's look at the rock cycle. And we're going to start with the igneous because most rocks on our planet are igneous. Um, an igneous rock, and let's start just for the sake of argument to, to make it easier to understand. We're going to start with granite. Granite is a very common igneous rock. You can find it all over the place. In fact, most of our continent is made of granite. And it's made up of quartz and other things. But eventually, granite comes to the surface. It forms inside of a volcano, and eventually, it makes it to the surface. And when it gets there, weather and climate and all those processes are able to get at it. And that process of getting at it is called weathering. And it breaks it down into little chunks. Pieces of granite might fall off a cliff in Yosemite and fall down into the valleys. It might break off in ice and form into little bits and over time, those little bits are weathered into even little or tiny pieces of sediment. So we're weathering and breaking it down into little bits. Those pieces of sediment are put into a river and are transported out maybe to the ocean, to a beach, where they're deposited. As they're deposited, they start to build up. So we've got, we started with an igneous rock and now we have these little bits of sand that are being piled on top of each other. Over time, that sand is going to start to get compacted. Think of it as it's building up more and more, it's pushing down on it. And as it's starting to be compacted, you're going to get a sedimentary rock. We've gone from igneous to sedimentary. 
Now, a sedimentary rock also could be weathered, and you can get this cycle around and around because all rocks on our planet are subject to weathering. But let's just say that sedimentary rock, it's on a continental plate, which is being moved around by plate tectonics, and eventually, because like all rocks, it's going to, um, well, eventually the rocks, the continents are going to collide into each other. That collision is going to add heat and pressure. When heat and pressure are applied to rocks, it changes them. It makes minerals align up to each other. It changes the way the rocks look, and it forms a new type of rock, a metamorphic rock. So we've gone from igneous to sedimentary to metamorphic. Now, those continents don't just stop moving when they collide, and eventually all rocks on the surface are subducted and subduction pulls rock deep into the earth. When it's pulled deep into the earth, it's really warm, and that heat begins to melt the rocks. In melting it, it forces the magma up into a volcano, where it will cool and form a brand new igneous rock, and the whole cycle starts over again. The earth has recycled rocks. Now, like so much in science, it's really not that simple. And nothing really works that easily. You could take an igneous rock, and you could put heat and pressure to it and form a metamorphic rock. And you'd have your own little tiny cycle there. You could take a metamorphic rock, and you could weather it. As a result, that weathering would create a sedimentary rock. Now, it is kind of hard, though, and actually I would argue impossible to take a sedimentary rock and turn it into an igneous rock. Because in melting it, eventually, for some amount of time, you're going to make it into a metamorphic rock. So I'm not going to add that. Though sometimes when you look on the internet or textbooks, you might see where people turn sedimentary rock into igneous rock. And I would disagree with that. But you can see that the earth is recycling all our material. It's changing everything back around. It's reusing it over and over again through these loops, the rock cycle. So what did we do in this video? Well, we did two things. The first thing we did is we defined the rock cycle. And we said that the rock cycle is the process that the Earth turns one rock into another rock. It's recycling rocks. And then we identified the major type, parts of the rock cycle, how an igneous rock or any rock could be weathered and deposited to form a sedimentary rock, which could be changed from heat and pressure to a metamorphic rock, which then could be subducted and melted and then finally cooled form an igneous rock, and that there's a little bit more complicated than that. Go back and see. So let me remind you how these videos work. You can always hit pause if I'm going too fast, or go back and watch it again. Uh, but always remember just to keep moving forward.